Finance Limited for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, without much ado, I would like to uh, hand over the floor to Mr. Rajiv Jain, uh, MD and CEO of Bajaj Finance Limited, Mr. Sandeep Jain, uh, CFO, and the entire leadership team of Bajaj Finance and its subsidiaries is also with us on this call. Over to you, Rajiv, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on which part of geography you're in. Um, uh, uh, I'll take you through the, uh, uh, the quarterly results uh, uh, from the investor. Uh, the, the presentation is on the investor section of the, of the website, uh, and I'll be referring to that. Let's jump right in. Uh, let's go to panel four quickly. Uh, uh, principally, a, I would say an excellent quarter. The, the word excellent I'm using after a long time. Last two years have been hard. We've, we've gotten to good. We finally got into excellent um, across balance sheet growth, portfolio quality, and profitability. Uh, highest ever new customer acquisition in Q1. Overall, strong, very strong start to the fiscal, I would say. And as our previous vice chairman used to say, that a good if first quarter. If your first quarter is good, then in general your year, year is good. Uh, and we saw, we've seen that happen uh, over time uh, over the last 15 years. Uh, in general, back to all long-term guidance metrics for the last three quarters in a row now. Uh, on track to go fully digital across all products and services on app by January 23 across all products and services and on web uh, across all products and services by March 23. Core AUM uh, came in at 2 lakh 4,000 crore. Uh, core difference being IPO financing, which still used to sit uh, till till third quarter, depending on the uh, quarter ending. Uh, core AUM uh, came in at 2 lakh 4,000 crore. It's a 31 percent year on year growth. OPEX to NI came in at 35.9. PAT uh, came in at tad below 2600 crores to 2596 crores. Uh, ROE annualized 23% and net NPA came in at 51%. Um, let me just take you through some, some of the highlights. Um, let's go to panel 5. Uh, as I said, core AUM just a tad below 12,000 crore growth. Um, uh, quarterly run rate uh, that Principally gives us a anywhere between 50 to 54,000 crores of net balance sheet growth uh, in the current year is really how we are looking at it. Uh, AUM growth uh, was secular across all lines of business. I'll cover that. Um, uh, company did 7.42 million loans. It's, it's just about the highest ever that we've ever done. Uh, as a company, the last was 7.6 million, but at that point in time, we used to have wallet loans and Remy loans, uh, which we wallet we stopped wallet loans we stopped in 2020 uh, remy loans we curtailed to less than 25 percent of the volume um, so uh, if i knock that off it's the highest ever loans that we have done uh, um, in a quarter as a company uh, b2b disbursements uh, were up 83 percent year on year year on year numbers are not that comparable given that last year was delta but uh, still refer to them uh, on and off overall 16,000 crores of disbursements that gives us a 60, 64,000 crores of run rate on overall B2B disbursements um, uh, for the year. Uh, we launched our non-captive two-wheeler financing business on 6th of July. Uh, first month of uh, first month, we should land up doing three, three and a half thousand uh, two-wheeler loans in the first month of loan. Uh, comes with a two-wheeler marketplace at a stack level. Uh, comes with pre-approved limit for 30 million of our customers out of 33 million EMI card customers. We are we, we have approved pre-approved 30 million uh, customers for non-captive two-wheeler and full point of sale infrastructure that uh, we built uh, over the last uh, 15 years in in the B2B space. We added 2.73 million new customers to the franchise. Uh, pretty comfortable with 9 to 10 million uh, new customer addition uh, on a full year basis. Overall franchise came in at 60 million. Uh, and the, the, the cross-sell franchise, which we are willing to do multiple products, uh, cross-sell to is 30, just a tad below 35 million. Uh, uh, added 82 new locations from an omnipresence standpoint. Total geographic presence now 3,700 locations. Uh, competitive intensity continues to remain elevated across products. Um, we continue to focus on margin rather than uh, growth. Uh, margin first, growth second. Uh, we we so far managed to deliver both. Started uh, increase pricing across uh, uh, all the products gradually from June 22. We took first action in June. We're taking second action in August, and so on and so forth. Cost of funds uh, came in at 6.64. Given the strong ALM uh, that we managed, uh, the overall strong treasury management, uh, uh, the impact of recent 
interest rate hikes on the overall cost of funds in the current fiscal will only be gradual. Uh, so even if you see sequentially, I sequentially we dropped, is it? I think sequentially we marginally dropped. I don't, I don't recall right now, but uh, we've dropped sequentially. So seven basis points you've dropped. So uh, uh, overall, I think we managed treasury quite well. So uh, and as you plot over the next three quarters and do have do simulation and sensitivity, uh, we are reasonably comfortably placed here. Uh, deposits book, uh, we are uh, we think it's a great time to gather deposits. Uh, so we continue to grow that rapidly. Uh, net growth was uh, uh, was in a way sequentially 10%, 10 percent, 10 11 percent, 10 odd percent, 20 percent of overall borrowings. Um, we did uh, four deposit rate, uh, four hikes. We did uh, in sequentially we increased deposit rates by between 55 and 70 basis points depending on the maturity. Uh, we are accelerating retail deposits. We think it's a great time, and uh, we think in a three-year horizon we can take this this to 25% of our overall uh, liability profile. Opex to name 35.9%. Uh, we continue to invest in teams and technology. Uh, given the deep investments that we are making in our omni-channel stroke omni-presence strategy, which is geo, app, web, and payments, the uh, we expect Opex to name to continue to remain between 35 and 36% for. Uh, for um, FI23. Uh, hopefully, we should start to see some tapering as we exit the year. Uh, loan losses um, uh, came in good, 755 crores, uh, included a, a 190 crore uh, impact on uh, full provision of full provision and write-off of a commercial account. Um, uh, so adjusted for adjusted for that, the uh, uh, and uh, management overlay came in at 1,000 crores, so 60 crores. Uh, in a way, was consumed from the management overlay towards this account, and 130 crores was uh, was uh, was was a one-time provision in Q1. So the flow flow basis loan losses and provisions were actually 625 crores. Um, so uh, that's really the run rate that, as we are as we are doing as we are looking at the risk matrix across portfolios, is what we are seeing. Uh, GNP and NPA uh, came in at um, one of the historic lows at 1.25 and 55 basis points. Now, this number will, uh, as it seems at this point in time, will continue to trend downwards uh, for the next two odd quarters. Stage two uh, remain, uh, came down by 300 odd crores. Uh, stage three came down by uh, 600 odd crores. Uh, Ten portfolios are green, one is yellow. This was the same uh, 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 view even in Q4. Uh, Pat. While it grew 159%, as I said, year-on-year -year metrics are not really comparable, but uh, 2596 crores was the pat um, uh, for the quarter. Capital adequacy quite strong at 26%. Uh, tier two capital, tier one capital was 23.84. Mind you, this includes 2,500 crores of capital infusion uh, that we did uh, in BHFL uh, on 7th of April. Uh, total headcount uh, stood at just a tad below 38,000 people. Uh, Bajaj Housing Finance, you now started to cover, provide a little more texture and color on Bajaj Housing Finance. AUM was up 40% at 57,500 crores. Uh, home loan AUM grew 41, loan against property AUM grew 33, LRD grew 43, uh, DF grew 68. Uh, uh, the mix, however, is uh, as you see on point number uh, point number 25 is 63% is home loan, 11% uh, is lab, 13% uh, is LRD, uh, DF is 4%, and rural is 3%. Uh, so read the growth in the context of the, uh, of the portfolio composition. Uh, approvals grew 127%, came in at 16,000 crore. Uh, disbursements grew 118%, uh, came in at 9,255 crore. Uh, geographic footprint was 158 locations. Um, Overall, uh, pretty strong position. Uh, the company delivered a, uh, BHFL delivered a post-tax profit of 316 crores, a growth of 96%. OPEX to name came in a, uh, at 26.8%. Loan losses and provisions were only 7 crores for the quarter, uh, and uh, we are very well covered there. Gross NPA and net NPA came in at 27 basis points and 11 basis points. Overall, stage 2 for BHFL was 492 crores, came down. Uh, as you can see, sequentially 110 crores. Stage three came down by uh, 12 odd crores. Total headcount in that company stood at uh, 3,567 people. Bajaj Financial Securities, 36,000 customers they added. We are as a as a 
articulated in Q3 and Q4, we are repivoting towards uh, uh, customer who, who who uses the account rather than customers uh, just for the sake of it. We have sufficient number of customers. We have 60 million customers. We don't need customers. We need active customers. Uh, so we are repivoting uh, total franchise to that 370 odd thousand. Margin trade financing book is now 740 odd crores and uh, made a profit. So they are new kid on the block. Uh, uh, to uh, and as I said in the AGM just now, that next year should be year that uh, uh, should belong to them. Uh, the last year, anyway, and in the current year would would belong to BHFL uh, as a subsidiary. And by next year, BFSL should also be ready. Uh, very quickly, omnipresence. We have now changed the format. Uh, uh, I'm providing you update. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. This is more for uh, from a disclosure standpoint is where we are headed. Uh, but more importantly, we now started to provide data, and we'll keep adding on this data as we as we go along in the balance of the year. So more products will get added. More in the process, more metrics will get added. But just on the panel 10, what is relevant and important is the phase one our platform is live. As you're aware, phase two will have three sprints. Uh, we last provided an update on this in. Uh, in November, uh, this is the second update I'm providing. I'll provide final update in, in January quarter. Uh, by the time uh, we would have gone live uh, with two major sprints, the, which is the 31st August sprint and uh, November, 15 November sprint, a very small residual, uh, less than 10% uh, work would be left on sprint three, which is on 31st January. Actually, by then even that would have uh, that would be close to going live. So that that is really when we will provide the next update. Uh, three, four, five are uh, some texture and color on how the UI and the UX will look as the new phase come in. Uh, principally, three, four, five mean it's a significant expansion in the way uh, the asset is being organized. Uh, payments. Uh, uh, phase one features are are live as you're aware. Uh, we gave some. I gave some texture and color even in the AGM. Uh, just now, uh, we we are continuing to move along. Uh, sprint two on payments will go live by 15 November. It's a big sprint. Uh, it'll allow a whole lot more features and uh, much better experience on UPI registration and so on and so forth. On web platform, two phases. Phase one will go live on 1st of October and phase two on 1st of March. Uh, as I said in AGM, that fundamentally uh, by March 23, we across all our products and services, um, products that we manufacture and products that we distribute, end-to-end, uh, uh, -end, journey to journey, uh, we would have actually fully gone digital. Uh, so our, our digital transformation, as I would like to call it, would have actually completed by 1st of January 23, or if I say including web, equal, app equal to web, by March 23. Uh, so we'll provide the next update on this by uh, by January. The reason I'm also saying we'll not provide update after that because, as I've said, that this is a means to an end. This is the way we'll we will conduct business from here on, or we are conducting business. Uh, so um, if there's anything, if there's a big change in UI UX, if there is a full refresh that we're doing, that's when we provide update. Otherwise, we'll um, uh, after January. Uh, this is the way we run business. Move. Uh, what I want to spend two, three minutes on is in this panel, which is panel number 12. We now start to provide some data on our omnipresent strategy. Uh, so as you, I, I'll go a little slowly so that we're all on the same page, uh, just to provide uh, the format of it. Uh, locations, you're aware. Gold loan branches now, uh, we have 155, just on omnipresence. We'll have 232 standalone gold loan branches by end of the year. These are, so we have 650 branches from where we offer gold loans, but 155 are standalone branches. Uh, they will they will get uh, another. We will do another 75 more branches in the current balance of the fiscal to get to 232 uh, standalone branches. Uh, on app metrics, so there are four blocks span between panel and third, 12 and 13. There are app metrics, there are app payment metrics, there are app business metrics, there are marketplace metrics, and digital EMI card metrics. This is really how we'll provide data. Uh, what we, we will keep expanding the scope of these. Uh, uh, these lines or rows uh, as phase two gets delivered and has more data, uh, we feel has reached a level of maturity for us to start to share this. And when I say maturity, I mean stability of the data rather than uh, anything else. Let's just quickly cover app metrics, downloads in the quarter. We had 11 million downloads. We forecast that we'll have 53 to 55 million downloads uh, uh, of the new app platform by end of the year. Net installs are 23 million now. 
we will end the year with between 35 and 38 million. In our programs are 62. We will have 100 plus uh, in our programs by end of the year. In terms of wallet accounts, we added 9 million. We expect that we will have 18 and a half million uh, cumulative wallet accounts. UPI handles, we forecast 12 million uh, UPI handles. We added 3.6 million. Uh, we have 3.6 million uh, UPI handles as of uh, uh, as of now. We had 2 million bill pay transactions. We forecast that on a full year basis, we will have 12 odd million. QR deployment has gone live for P2M, uh, 18,000. 18, we think we'll have 100,000. Uh, the P2P QR will go live in another one month time. That will be a separate line, just to give you texture on what I mean, uh, by uh, how more lines will get emerged. Move. Uh, digital card, now the, these are app business metrics. As I said, technology is a means to an end. This app was never supposed to be anything else but help us do more business, help us grow our AUM, help us uh, eventually reduce our cost, uh, help us manage credit better, risk better. So digital EMI card acquisition overall came in at 522,000, but from the app came in at 70,000. Uh, overall, we expect 300, 325,000 digital EMI cards acquisition through the app. Personal loan disbursements were 2,109 crores in the quarter. We expect full year to be between 9 and 10,000. Credit cards were 30,000. We expect 200,000 on a full year basis. Flexi loan transactions were 866,000 transactions, pay in and pay out, both. Now we expect between 3.6 to 3.8 million. Uh, DMS receipts, clients came and paid 644,000 in the quarter. We expect on a full year basis 3 to 3.2 million. Bajaj Mall visits, 32 million in the quarter. Uh, we expect 140 to 150 million visits to Bajaj Mall, um, uh, to Bajaj Mall loans. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, you know, either I just provide a drift uh, to the frame, and as I said, we'll keep adding more rows and call rows, may not be columns, uh, as we uh, continue to uh, provide more disclosure. And let me just jump right on to panel 46 now, um, so that I can leave time for questions. This is the consolidated AUM. As you can see, what is relevant is uh, on the right hand side, which is what was the AUM composition 30 June 21 and AUM composition 22? 7% um, was auto finance is now down to 5. Rest of the lines are all remaining plus minus very similar. 7, 8, 20, 21, 2, 2, 8, 8, 13, 13, 4, 5, 2, 0. Of course, IPO financing has gone away. This, that's the conversation on core AUM. Uh, commercial lending 6, 6 and 31, 32. Uh, product mix remaining same. Uh, uh, largely, as you can see, other than uh, uh, auto finance business. Uh, this is the provisioning coverage. Overall, gross NPA and NPA sequentially continues, continues to go down. 1.73 in December quarter, down to 1.6, and it's at 1.25. Net NPA down from 78 basis points to 68 to 51 basis points. Move. Uh, this is consolidated ECL provisioning. Uh, we are uh, we are pretty uh, strongly placed there. Move. Uh, just on the last portfolio quality section, uh, 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 as I said, uh, uh, out of 11 businesses, 10 are green. Uh, better than pre-COVID, I would say, at this point in time, uh, in most of them. And uh, um, uh, while two-wheeler looks to be uh, uh, yeah, to be better than pre-COVID, as you can see in February, it was 86. But even in February 20, uh, we had we had we had marked this as yellow because 86% is not what the current portfolio ought to be. It used to be 89-90%. So as as and when it gets back to 89-90%, that's when we will, uh, uh, you know, principally um, make this green. Uh, so that's really the quarter. Uh, uh, and uh, happy to take questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Dawal from DSP. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, yeah hi, uh, Rajiv. Uh, congrats on a uh, good set of numbers and uh, thanks for the additional disclosure. Uh, I had uh, two questions. Uh, first one was uh, related to the uh, cross-sell rate. Uh, uh, so I, I've been seeing that it's been improving in the last uh, few quarters. Uh, but uh, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, adjusted for the uh, wallet uh, loans uh, that we used to offer pre-COVID and also uh, the Remy business, uh, uh, I, I know you've scaled it down. Uh, but even adjusted for that, uh, you know, it used to contribute about 7% pre-COVID. So uh, still the cross-sell rates are not, uh, you know, back uh, yet uh, and there's significant uh, you know scope for uh, uh, normalization so i just wanted to understand uh, when do you see uh, you know this uh, sort of playing through and uh, also you know uh, is it a uh, value proposition uh, uh, issue or a, a risk filter issue uh, if you could give some more color uh, around that uh, that would be useful uh, that's the first question uh, well, the now, second question what do you mean by yeah okay, what do you mean by cross sell ratio of 7% yeah. because we are not able to correlate no, no. So what I was referring to, uh, you know, uh, if you look at wallet loans and uh, uh, Remy, uh, uh, they used to contribute about 7% of loan bookings uh, pre-COVID. Uh, uh, today, uh, if you scale them down to zero as well, uh, still the current cross-sell rate is, uh, uh, you know, materially lower than uh, pre-COVID uh, run rate. Uh, so uh, because the franchise has grown, the loan bookings uh, adjusted for them are still not uh, grown in the same proportion. So, uh, so that's where I was coming from that. Uh, when do you expect this normalization and uh, is it a value proposition or a risk filter or any other factor that is driving uh, this behavior? And uh, the second question was related to, uh, you know, we've seen uh, uh, on, on uh, NIA2 OPEX, uh, uh, so cost to income basically, uh, so we've seen, uh, you know, uh, conversion rates on uh, the, the EMI store improving, uh, we've seen uh, uh, a share of uh, digital EMI cards increasing, uh, 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 so, uh, you know, uh, all the metrics seem to be uh, operating uh, in the right direction. Uh, but just uh, uh, I, I wanted to understand uh, as we complete our uh, you know transformation journey uh, at the end of uh, 23, uh, what could be a realistic uh, you know expectation of OPEX to NII uh, maybe in FY24 or beyond? Uh, uh, if you could give some uh, uh, you know uh, sort of perspective that around that, that would be useful. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So uh, on the cross sell rate, uh, Daval, uh, In fact, uh, if you were to adjust the wallet loan and Remy loan. The cross sell rate is up versus where we were, let's say, in quarter three of FI20, which was which was a pre-pandemic period that we are referring to. So, uh, so maybe maybe we can we can we can reconcile the number, but uh, we added I think 2.5 million customers in that year in that quarter. Uh, in the current quarter, we have added 2.74 million customer new customer, and number of loans are by and large same. So, and and if I were to remove Remy and Wallet that we used to do earlier, which would get counted as cross sell. The ratio has actually improved. Okay. Uh, on the OPEX in the world, uh, I think uh, we had guided even uh, in the last quarter, uh, given that uh, we continue to invest in technology teams and resourcing for uh, propagating the omnipresence business model. Uh, the OPEX to name for the current year may remain elevated. 35.5 to 36% is the corridor that we are looking at from a full year perspective. Uh, uh, quarter one, you would see, quarter one, we have seen the number. Uh, I have reason to believe that quarter two could be flat, flattish, and then after that, you will start to see some gradual reduction. Separately, I mean, because he is asking actually more so 24. Look, fundamentally, we do believe that we have reached the, and we have taken that decision that we have reached the level of inflection point on investments, whether, and mainly our investments is people and technology. So we have actually taken a pause. For from from 1st of July till till let's say 31st of December uh, at a design level to not add incremental resourcing uh, uh, on 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 additional investments. So because we also want to see uh, the 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 investments start to pay off. Plus uh, rising interest rate environment plus expected demand slowdown in uh, in Q3. So between both these areas, one being uh, one being uh, prudent about make an investment pause, make an investment pause um, uh, from an approach standpoint, and two, given uh, headwinds uh, uh, on, on potential demand slowdown in third quarter, uh, uh, rising interest rates. So uh, it's that's where we are, and Sandeep guided on where we think it will go in 23-24. We are also, let me be honest with you, uh, still trying to find the sweet spot. 
because the fact is, uh, it's a significant investment committed by us to build out both the app and web. The fact is, will operating leverage emerge? The answer is yes. As we start to see it, I think we can guide better rather than uh, uh, make a point. Uh, lastly, 3536 with with geography, app, web, and payments uh, all firing. Uh, it's a great number. <laughs> That's a second order point, but I'm not the judge for that. You are. Uh, is the point I would make. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Raju. This is very helpful. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, Raju. Uh, congratulations. If I have to put it graphically, soon as the pandemic clouds have receded, Bajaj Finance Fund has come out in uh, come out blazing. So delighted to see these uh, results uh, that one has been waiting for. Uh, when I uh, when I looked at the asset quality, uh, there seems to be dramatic improvement on GNPA. So is, is that uh, actual improvement or write offs have occurred? And. Uh, Actually, write-off for the quarter are 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 not. Uh, of course, we have written off the commercial account. That's one part of the conversation. But actually, write-offs, if I take the last three quarters, uh, is that is is flattish. Okay. So, uh, other than other than uh, the the 390 crore account that we've written off, there is structurally significant improvement in in asset quality. Whereby uh, at a design level, I just said it even at, in AGM that. If I take, of course, leave 2021 and 21, 22 aside, 1920 was a slow year. We ourselves, if I take till February, went 260 odd basis points of average credit cost to AUM. Uh, 18, because it was a slow year in general for the economy as well. 1819 was a, a, is a right number to benchmark. We'll probably look closer to 1819 at this point in time. Four months of the year are over. Uh, maybe even lower if the current momentum was to no, was to continue. So there is there is marked improvement, is what I would say. Oh, uh, that's uh, delightful. And uh, given that our philosophical stance always has been a trinity of uh, superior growth, uh, superior uh, capital efficiency, and uh, controlled uh, uh, super safe quality. Uh, all all angles seem to be uh, kind of now firing uh, appropriately as soon as uh, challenges have uh, kind of receded. So uh, given the fact that people, technology, products, uh, medium through which we enhance our footprint with the distribution and uh, products and all that, uh, what would you say uh, will be the most important uh, priorities uh, from the next year onwards? So what is it that you will be watching most closely? Uh, so, so one, I'll make a philosophical point. I said this is AGM, that our business of retail is about everyday improvement. <laughs> we cannot let that guard down in all direct dimensions of our business. I think that's an important point I must make. Uh, I think there remains tremendous opportunity in all our lines of business from a growth standpoint. Uh, other than I would, if I may say so, in the sales finance business, because we are very, very dominant there, and more people are in are getting into the business. Every new incremental guy, whatever he does to himself, but does chip away something from our end. Uh, so uh, other than that, I think the growth opportunities in every line of business remains uh, uh, structurally, uh, 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 from a medium term standpoint, um, uh, quite large. And we are, we are, we are, we are investing uh, in each one of the areas. I think as we get to next year, um, Atul Jain is here with me as a managing director of BHFL. Uh, uh, I think mortgage should shy, will fire much more. As they, as they complete their fifth year of transformation, will fire much more. BFSL should start to fire more. Um, so uh, we as, as a parent, BFL, should continue to fire more. So overall, um, we need a, a cleaner runway. Uh, 
country needs i would say for a little will little while a cleaner runway i think uh, uh, two years have been very very hard so i am uh, i am not seeing of course uh, is interest rate an issue is demand potential demand slow down an issue as i tell people that we are used to interest rates going up and down as a country i mean we see over eight quarters interest rates go up over last 15 years up by 200 225 basis points then they go down 200 200 225 basis points and so on and so forth so uh, we need not be as worried about interest rate rises and uh, and uh, going down than as the west uh, we are used to inflation uh, so i would say we 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 are reasonably well placed well by as a nation i would say or as as a company uh, at a micro level so and remain at it that's the important dimension <laughs> uh, not let the guard down fantastic so uh, just last point uh, is we run through our uh, uh, elevated investment in people technology uh, creating other platforms uh, to satisfy our ambition and our uh, kind of aspirations uh it will be fair to say now that things are indeed beginning to look uh, kind of normal in most respects yes uh, the next year should be a once again a defining year uh, the way bajaj finance uh, uh, picture is always been uh, uh, even though pandemic has been a rude interruption but i think we have shrugged it off beautifully and therefore now we call preparations highway being clear uh, uh 24 should be a year of uh, firing i hope on all cylinders i think so we will go fully digital uh, we would have uh, i keep telling people that digital is like magic until you get it is zero once you get it is one <laughs> so it's a zero one and we are committed to get it we as a management are behind it uh, in some we would have found one in some we would still be zero it's a matter of time before uh, we will find it and as you find it given the large franchise and the large product uh, uh, that we bring to the table the entire product suite we bring to the table uh, should be a stronger year i, I hope so we we'll say quarter at a time but why at this one time uh, and a year at a time uh, we deliver the next three quarters a stronger exit and a stronger entry into next year Uh, should make us stronger thank you rajiv and my big applause thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ashish sharma from anam asset management please go ahead <clears throat> yeah i uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers rajiv a uh, uh, couple of questions uh, one on the fee income side uh, Uh, is there any? Uh, I mean, uh, if if the, uh, the banks that we have tied up, uh, I mean uh, RBL Bank, if there is a slowdown in terms of uh, uh, card additions, uh, any any impact on the fee income side, uh, Rajiv? First question is that, and uh, second would be on on the gold loan. Uh, so we you mentioned that we we are opening standalone gold loan branches. Uh, so just from a perspective that we've seen that gold loan yields have compressed uh, for the system. uh does the gold loan product still make sense i mean i mean i'm i'm just trying to understand given that we have open stand loan branches so some color on that would be helpful rajiv uh sandeep fee rbl rbl yeah so i mean we have a deep strategic partnership with them uh, uh we uh, uh in partnerships you have ups and downs uh, uh we can we are not a uh, uh, we are not a partnership for up Uh, we we are a partnership or up and down we remain committed uh, to continue to partner with them in a given year they may be slow for the last prior to that for four years they were strong i think that's really the nature of partnership is uh, parallelly as agreed with them and given our ambition uh, we've kicked off um, the dbs partnership that's gone live uh, we are now uh, booking between 9 and 10000 accounts we think we'll exit with Uh, 30 40000 accounts uh, between 30 and 40000 accounts per month with gbs partnership as well so that the heads that we wanted and because we know in partnerships uh, um, uh, things can uh, at times be up and down i think this is really where uh, uh, having multiple partnership structures deep and strategic albeit uh, help so um, 
and I am hopeful uh, with 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 the changes in RBL. Uh, and they have said whatever I've seen in public uh, domain that they want to grow the microfinance and the card business. Uh, I am hoping, and we we are well positioned to assist them meet that objective and in the process help us uh, grow as well. Parallelly, DBS partnership um, should grow. I think that's really what. Um, no. Gold loan, uh, it's an interesting business. Um, uh, we've been at it for a while. Uh, we've come to a conclusion that uh, as an adjunct frame, which means in the branch doing the business, only goes you, takes you that far. Uh, so we started a test with, quote-unquote, standalone gold loan branches the way a gold loan company would do, and we've seen... Uh, 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 significant results. Uh, we've seen that it exactly works out then for a leading gold loan player. Um, so that's really what we are chasing. Behind it, we put the power of digital. I mean, uh, one of the metrics that sometime in Q3 or Q3 or Q2 we start to release is how much business is coming digitally uh, uh, from a conversion standpoint from our franchise on gold loan. Just to give you texture, it's one of the metrics sometime in Q3 or uh, Q4 we would start to release. Uh, we are quite satisfied with the um, with the return profile. Um, it's it's not diluted to Bajaj Finance uh, shareholders at all or to us as a company. Uh, and there's opportunity to improve that profile uh, as we as we go along. So uh, only thing uh, that business did very well in FI 21, then 22 gold loan rates came down uh, and went through. A shock, I would say, because it's commodity link. Right now, it's again looking up. So, but overall, we are quite uh, positive and optimistic about the business. And we think in a two to three year horizon, this could be a reasonably large business. Great. Uh, that's helpful, Rajiv. Uh, just lastly, on BHFL, uh, uh, I mean, the profitability was quite strong. I mean, are there any one-offs uh, or, I mean, uh, I mean, have, I mean, because ROA and ROE metrics look very uh, good. Uh, I mean, is this the sustainable run rate, or I mean, are there any sort of a one-offs? Uh, Standalone, there is. On consolidated, there is not. But um, so, so is one. Uh, yeah. 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 BHFL. BHFL has grown reasonably well, even in terms of balance sheet. They have grown at 40 percent uh, versus last year. Uh, in the current quarter, they have done some assignment transactions, which results in upfront revenue recognition. But on a consolidated basis, that has knocked off. So okay. there's a one-timer sitting in BHFL financials, but on a consolidated basis, there's none. Secondly, as the interest rate starts to go up, uh, as you would have seen with other housing finance companies also, the spread for uh, next two, three quarter may look elevated. That's also a benefit that's sitting in uh, in the quarter result. Because yeah. of a better treasury management yeah. that passed through on the library side is uh, slower um, uh, uh, because of our uh, long-term locking. Sure. Uh, that's helpful, uh, and uh, congratulations, uh, uh, first of all, and all the best, uh, Rajiv, for the for the very bold guidance you've given at the AGM. Uh, thank you. I thought 2 lakh crore is a good time to give a guidance. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we don't give guidance generally. Uh, I think 2 lakh crore is a right time to give a guidance. We'll give the gu next guidance when, when we achieve the guidance that we've given today. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rajiv Sandeep and team. Uh, congratulations. Uh, so, firstly, with respect to the uh, housing finance business, in fact, uh, the fee income which is there, uh, maybe what would have led to that? I don't know if you have explained it earlier, but I missed a part of the call. So, uh, and, and it seems like we are growing more of a LRD and a construction finance out there. So, any particular proportion wherein we would actually want to take that? In fact, ticket size is also rising on the LRD side. So, how are we particularly seeing this? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we lost you in between. No, sir. I was just saying that uh, uh, particularly with respect to... to uh, second point that you're making. No, so uh, overall LRD and uh, uh, developer uh, finance book. So LRD also the ticket size is rising now. Developer finance is uh, almost seven uh, percent of the book, and all put together it is like LRD plus uh, developer finance is twenty percent now. So any particular proportion wherein we would want to take that up to, okay, uh, over a period because I think that's growing at a much uh, faster pace uh, within the overall book. The, the risk profile is. Structurally, 
structurally different. I think that's a fundamental point. I I would like to grow LRD more. I mean, we've done that business for 12 years. Uh, even through pandemic, where offices were <laughs> all, I mean, uh, you know, we've all lived through the pandemic. LRD is a very different risk profile than DF. So read them. Uh, don't read them as commercial exposures. They are commercial, of course they are. But they are. Uh, I would like to do more LRD than I would like to do, let's say, lab. Or I would like to do more LRD than I would like to do home loan. Let me make a point. Uh, at, a, at a design level. So uh, let me just make that point uh, distinctly uh, clear. Uh, so uh, uh, DF, uh, we've been at it, as you can see, it's 4%. Now come to DF. Okay. Uh, as I, and that's why I rightfully made the point. Ki you look at the growth percentages in the context of the contribution of the balance sheet. Uh, uh, we've been in DF now for, we've been at DF for five years more. Five, six years, it's been two, three percent of the balance sheet. Uh, we, uh, we've seen no, no hits on, uh, in any given manner. Uh, uh, it is a good business. Uh, we built capability and a domain expertise after five, six years of business, and we feel comfortable growing the business. Our exposures are still a lot more granular. Uh, our exposures in DF remains at between 25 and 35 crores. We don't want to take chunky exposures, which is not so the case. Let me make a point in LRD. We are a lot more comfortable. Uh, uh, we are, we are, uh, it's a two layers of risk management that we, we naturally as a lender get, uh, get taking, so we're willing to take uh, even a 400, 500 crore exposure in LRD, uh, but in DF want to remain between, on an average between 25 and 35, maybe do a peak exposure of 100, 120 crores. So that's, uh, I wouldn't club them together. Atul, anything you want to add, anything? No, uh, see, as Rajiv has rightly called out, uh, LRD is a, over the cycles also, it's not today, even if you look at the industry cycle or over the cycle, uh, the construct of LRD, if it is backed by, the marquee lessees, which is the construct what we follow, because there is no execution risk. So both risks are very different. Exactly. Developer finance, by a definition, has a combination of a execution risk and then consequently subsequent sale risk. None of these risks exist in LRD, and that is where we are focused on LRD. As an asset mix, you will keep on seeing that if you look at last two years mix, the home loans constitutes between 60 to 64 percent, which is what it will remain, because that is the construct which is not changing, the balance portion between LAP, LRD and DF, uh, with DF upper cap would be close to 10-12% even when we mature as a business because we would not want to cross around 12% kind of a number in developer finance. But balance between LAP and LRD is a number uh, where we will keep on uh, moving around. Based on our assessment. Based on our assessment. As of today, our assessment is if we have to do an honest assessment of the LAP rates, rate of interest in the market versus LRD rate and the risk profile, uh, we are better off doing LRD rather than doing any LAP. Uh, based on today, risk returns uh, on the pricing available in the market with the risk. Yeah. And our rates and our yields on LRD would be competitive with respect to the markets or we would be lower given the profile? We are, we are, we have onboarded, we are, we are working with almost all the top market developers in the country. Uh, so the, the, it is a very competitive industry because if a industry, if, if, a, if a product has been absolutely considered to be safe in the industry, then the pricing is uh, very fine and we compete uh, with all the large super players. Prime. Super pricing. prime. Super prime clients and super prime pricing. Okay. Sure, sure. And fee income would be related to that in terms of a higher disbursement towards no, this so segment? Fee income, like, uh, was a one-time income in terms of an assignment income of 109 crores. That's where the fee income is a uh, income appearing in the uh, in the quarter result. That's, this is an assignment of a 950 crore uh, uh, lab portfolio. Uh, that is a income generation because as per index standards, you have to book uh, income upfront. So that's the fee income which is reflected. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on the quarter. Uh, just one question for Sandeep. Firstly, what percentage of your bank borrowings would be repo linked versus MCLR linked? And are you seeing banks now moving back towards MCLR linked loans as liquidity driver? Uh, so, Piran, we are not seeing significant shift happening uh, in terms of mix of repo and MCLR incrementally, uh, just because rates are going up. 
Uh, in fact, uh, in the last quarter as well, we have got lots of approvals from bank linked to MCLR. And I think banks are taking even, uh, even today, banks are taking time in terms of passing on the cost increase in MCLR because savings rate interest have not gone up. So uh, that's the thing. In, in BHFL, we do have uh, repo link borrowing from banks because they also have a natural hedge in terms of home loan being linked to repo link. Repo and EBLR. Repo and EBLR both. Repo. So in oh. BHFL, we generally prefer to borrow in repo link or EBLR link rather than MCLR. Yeah. In BFL, contribution of repo link uh, bank borrowing is lower. And contribution of bank borrowing itself is lower. Is lower. Okay. So in, in, uh, between bond markets and uh, deposits, which are all locked in. Understood. And uh, if you could just give some color on, you know, your new to Bajaj customers, our customer acquisition was very strong this quarter. So out of these 2.7 million, let's say how many are new to credit? If they are not, then what is their average to do score? Uh, are you acquiring them through, you know, point of sale or through the app? Uh, uh, any color on, you know, the profile of so the sorry customers to you're acquiring? So can I request you to speak a little louder, please? No, I can hear him. I can hear him. That's fine. Uh, so principally, as you saw, 522,000 customers in the quarter came from the Insta EMI card. Uh, only 10% are customers that are in what I would call that um, uh, we did not want. We wanted to uh, rest. We wanted uh, them to become our customers. So we stimulated uh, using a web ecosystem or the app ecosystem, as you saw the numbers. Uh, the... Uh, uh, we don't, if, you, if your client is coming over EMI card only uh, or at point of sale, you could be 0 minus 1 or you are doing 750. We don't do uh, uh, in between uh, other than some of the design of experiments or DOEs as we call them that we may run, uh, uh, but otherwise very, very little. So it's 750. It could be 0 or minus 1, which is really where uh, new to credit comes in. Uh, so in general, 60% of the customers, 60-65% of the customers for many, many years have been um, uh, Bureau 750 and above, uh, and balance uh, are, uh, are new to credit. So 30-35% are new to credit uh, at a design level, 60-65% are Bureau uh, 750 and above. It's not changed materially over time. Got it, got it. And just to clarify one last thing, 37,000 employees, that is on-roll plus off-roll? No, oh, no, it's only on-roll. Okay, so you've added 6,000 employees this quarter, roughly. Did we say 31,000? Uh, 31 is in your annual report. 7 is console. Are you doing apple to apple? It's console. Uh, so, uh, that, that's my question. Yeah, so 37,000 is console. Uh, do console to console, I don't think the number is 6,000. So there's something, there's, something, uh, it's, uh, there's something wrong. I mean, if you could be wrong, we'll, we, Sandeep will clarify it to you, uh, because you would have published the number in annual report. We started to give this number. We've not added 6,000, that I can tell you. So uh, it could be a typo error, because sure, sure. you're processing okay. this data for the first time. It's possible. Uh, but I'm not saying it is, but it's possible. Got it, got it. That, that's all from my end. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hi, Rajiv and, uh, and team. Uh, you know, Rahul, you are uh, genuinely feeble, <laughs> unlike the previous one. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it better, Rajiv? Better, better, better. Great. Uh, I mean, uh, great, great results. Uh, congratulations. Just had, uh, you know, two or three questions. Um, you know, first, uh, you know, just getting the usual stuff out, uh, the liabilities management. So uh, you talked about gradual increase in cost of funds. And the ALM table that you give out is, I think, behavioral based. So fair to say that the margin should not really see any undue pressure because of, you know, uh, increasing cost of funds from the yeah. level? Yeah, not for the next three or quarters. You will see gradual movement, yes. And we are also incrementally passing through all new acquisition. As I said, we have raised rates by 25 to 40 basis points depending on the business. And um, as rates keep rising, we will gradually pass them uh, ahead. So, okay. yes. Okay, okay, that, that's helpful, Rajiv. Uh, the second is, uh, again, on fee income, keeping this, uh, you know, um, I mean, talking more at the console level, um, uh, can, can, can we understand, you know, what proportion would be more balance sheet or dispersal link, what proportion would be from third party, and then given that, you know, some of these digital properties are going live, uh, have we seen any material shift? 
uh, on the TPD side, uh, which is driving the fee income. Rahul, read it as uh, quarter three, 2019-20. Look at these numbers as that. There is, uh, this is increasingly, and the reason I'm making the point is uh, even in uh, even in Q2, Q3 last year, we still had, uh, uh, let's say, IPO financing income sitting there. Now there's nothing sitting there. There's no lumpiness. This is all pure flow-based business. This is all pure flow. Uh, this is a normalized quarter from all uh, 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 from all lines. Actually, last two quarters have been. Yep. Uh, uh, but in Q4, because 15 odd days were lost to Omicron. Uh, Omicron, right? Uh, Omicron. So uh, there was still some noise, but now this is a fully normalized P and L frame. Is what my point is. Sandeep can provide some color. Uh, I think it's reasonably granular. We have multiple heads uh, in which fees and commission is recognized and received. Uh, it's reasonably granular, and this is purely, purely uh, the fact. As Rajiv said, uh, as we are coming out of pandemic and we are getting into normalcy, these numbers are also not getting normalized. Fair, uh, got it. Uh, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, Rajiv, just going back to one of the statements that you made that you know the competition across different segment is inching up. Uh, you know, uh, you're seeing that in, in the sales financing business or even credit card, etc. Um, but when I look at you know our own numbers, uh, excluding mortgages, the ROAs are now north of six percent. Um, you know, versus four and a half pre-COVID. So does it mean that the structurally profitability has moved up in the businesses that we are doing? That we are doing? Um, and therefore, the competition, you know, even if that is inching up, there is more than enough for everyone to sort of grow and yet, you know, make enough profits. I don't know about others. I mean, we are mining more and more of our customers. We are going deeper and deeper into India. Um, uh, we are just keeping our head down and our head work. <laughs> so, uh, when I say competitive intensity is more intense, we've also done leverage analysis. Let me make a point. Uh, uh, interestingly, nobody has asked the question ki competition bada hai, leverage bada hai kya? When we looked at the retro data of 2019 franchise to today, we are actually not seeing material movement at all on our franchise. Not at all, actually. I mean, uh, adjusted for 6-7% inflation, we are not seeing movement across uh, uh, the unsecured portfolios, any material movement at all. So, you know, um, so uh, whether there's space for all or not, or so on and so forth, uh, Rahul, you don't have a point of view on. We remain quite small, uh, as I said, other than uh, the sales financing part of the business where we are very dominant. So uh, uh, I think there's tremendous opportunity in every line for us to make a difference. So now coming back to uh, uh, coming back to uh, so clearly uh, one of the structural changes if you see and we pro we provide the ten year data so it's there in our deck only where cough used to be to where cough is so that we are all on the same page as to how as the uh, so uh, I think there is there is that line at play I think that's an important point I must make so that uh, have we done a good job of it in the last one and a half year to make sure that we'll we'll bear the benefit of it now in the next three quarters and going even to some extent into uh, into next fiscal yes that's why we are accelerating deposits while it in, it puts pressure on opex but it uh, our average deposit uh, um, tenor is now 33 months uh, we are now originating between 1700 to 1800 crores of retail deposits on a month on month basis that's locking in for 33 months maturity is 7.1% so uh, we are uh, we're doing a few things on the liability side, which should then by the time I'm hoping, Rahul, that someday the operating leverage part, which is one of the earlier questions was asked and I responded, by the time we should have hopefully found magic uh, or one uh, in most of the products and services. And that should mitigate principally or theoretically the, uh, the uh, uh, when normalized cough happens, by the time I should get operating leverage, or we should get operating leverage as a business uh, on the OPEX side. That's how we are looking at the business and the business model. Uh, we'll take quarter at a time. So, so basically the underlying is 6% ROA, there are enough and more levers uh, within the frame to sort of continue with we'll the look at consolidated ROA. I think, you know, I won't look at standalone ROA. I would look at consolidated ROA. Um, we used to be at 4.7% exiting. Uh, 
uh, that was also an ever high in in uh, December 19 quarter. Uh, our guidance is 4.4 to 4.7. Um, the current year will look higher. It's looking reasonably clear. Uh, will long-term guidance change? We will take a view end of FI 23. Uh, at this point in time, we are holding the guidance. Also holding the guidance, the next three quarters there should not, there will not be material reduction. But uh, this is a small last question, Rajiv. If I may, uh, on the mortgage business, um, you know, how much have we invested so far? What are the requirements, uh, you know, uh, in terms of capital infusion going forward? And if at all we plan to monetize the investment in this business? So seven and a half thousand crores is the total investment uh, in the. So that's just it, right? About close to billion dollars. Uh, they are now well capitalized for. 85-90,000 crores. 85-90,000 crores. 90,000 crores. They are well capitalized for 100,000 crores. Um, that gave them, a, in a way, we uh, as BFL uh, uh, provided two-year capital, so they don't even need capital for next two years. Um, and uh, we'll take a view on unlocking and so on and so forth at the appropriate point in time. I mean, you know, if uh, as consolidated, our design is consolidated um, unless and until regulation requires us to. Um, is what I would say. All right, very helpful. Thank you, and good luck to you and your team. Yeah, if I can cover the previous uh, point, open point on employee headcount. Yeah, uh, not on, not yours, Rahul. Yeah, uh, Piran had a point on that. Uh, we had 35,400 employees as of 31st March. As per annual uh, report. As per annual report, and we are at 37,873 consolidated headcount as on 30th June. That's addition of 2,400. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sarav from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. So, following up on this competition point, uh, you know, uh, Sarav, you are sounding you... a little distant. May I, can I request you to speak through the handset? Uh, 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 following up on this competition point, uh, what's uh, I mean? Are you facing some uh, uh, some pressure on the sales finance business from likes of Pine Labs or PTM? You know, using cost financing to do EMI generation. I mean, and what's your view? And have you seen your counter market share kind of get affected because of that? Thank you, sir. Yeah. So we are, we remain, as I said, even in AGM sort of between 65 and 68 percent of manufacturer subvention pool in CD, between 55 to 57 percent uh, manufacturer subvention pool in digital uh, lifestyle only we play. Um, uh, we keep uh, staying in the corridor. We are very clear that business is for two reasons. Uh, Uh, one is for customer acquisition, two for margin profile. Uh, actually, during this period, our margin profile has expanded. Uh, let me make that point. And as I keep saying, whether for that business or for any business, uh, it's margin first, um, growth later. Uh, you know, because margin saved us through the last two years of close to fatal crisis uh, that that we went through. So, uh, so. I mean, uh, we track them every month. Uh, no material change, as I said. Also, uh, we are very deep. Let me make that point. So all this noise is in 20 cities, 30 cities. Farthest it goes is 40 cities. Um, we offer this in 3,504 cities, uh, and we'll add, as I said, 400 odd cities uh, or towns this year. Uh, further, so uh, that's also one of the drivers for um, uh, margin expansion because it. Uh, uh, but it needs significant controllership uh, orientation. You need to perfect the model of how to open branches and how to scale them and how to ensure controllership is not lost. Uh, credit metrics are better. Uh, so this whole conversation is about 30 or 40 cities, but do they represent 50% of the business? The answer is yes. Do these 40 cities represent 50% of the business? And do the balance 3504 minus or 3586 minus 40, which is 3543, represent the balance 50? The answer is yes. Uh, so uh, we are making them up in different way. Um, is, does it answer your question? Yeah, partly, sir. Uh, uh, just one more question, sir. Uh, this Bajaj Mall business, uh, what is the sourcing you are getting at Bajaj Finance because of from Bajaj Mall yet? Uh, we provided data. Uh, where is the PPT? Uh, just so uh, if you see uh, on that on that panel only of where we provided data. That sorry, yes, yeah, slide 30, 227,000. Sorry, sorry, no. Uh, Bajaj Mall loans, 645,000 loans came through Bajaj Mall. 
No, but sir, in value terms, how much will it be? Uh, value doesn't change. So you should assume this value to be uh, 23,000. 23, Take it side. Oh. So 6,45,000 into um, 23,000. That's how you should read it as. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank so you. 1,500 out crores. Thank you. Okay. The next question is from Nenok Dhawalgala from Aditya Birla Sun Life Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Rajiv uh, and team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Little feeble, but audible. Sorry. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. One being, if you could talk about uh, the SME lending piece uh, and also our B2C business. I just wanted to understand how are you seeing uh, things uh, or trends on the ground in terms of growth uh, and what could we uh, prospect uh, in these two segments? So that is, I feel, um, I'm happy at least somebody's interested in the boring businesses. Uh, uh, um, they do generate reasonable yeah, profitability. I, I, IRF, IRF businesses. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, so principally, look, um, the SME lending business, uh, the denominator itself has expanded. What we call it, we are not an SME, we are an MSME. I mean, I must clarify that. Sometime we'll change that. SME itself is MSME, people with turnovers between 2 crores to 15 crores. That's really plus minus, give or take our uh, segment is 65, 70% of them are traders, balance are manufacturers. Clearly, inflation has helped traders, number one. So the denominator is ex itself, uh, with a lot more people are now doing this business, the denominator itself has expanded. So that's one part. The denominator in this business always existed. Uh, people were not willing to serve. I am still not sure they are. They will be able to serve for long, but we will let because we've seen too many uh, people come into the business and gone away after six months, nine months, twelve months, fifteen months. Uh, we and one of the other leading lenders uh, are the ones who stayed on for the last twelve, thirteen years. So that's one point I must make. Uh, our second point. So denominator has expanded. A lot more people are providing services. Inflation is requiring greater working capital for MSMEs. Uh, our segment is 2 to 15 crores. Um, um, uh, we, given very strong domain that we have created over the last 15 years, the business is growing quite well. Uh, having said that, its contribution, as you can see on aggregate basis, is 13 has remained 30. So, sub grow kar rahe, ye bhi grow kar rahe. Uh, And uh, we remain, uh, uh, we are very deep in this business. We we don't do this in top 30, 40 cities. We do it in 1,800 cities in India. So this is very deep. We built a degree of competence and capability in this business, which is uh, which is um, quite strong. I would say after B2B business, this is one business where we built a tremendous domain competence. And uh, that's why we have survived through cycles uh, in this business. So, And a uh, growing denominator eventually will help us as well. Uh, because more people are sharing the burden of growing. I just hope it's not a false dawn for competitors because this business can provide false dawn. B2C, uh, mostly cross-sell. Uh, we, we stay with top of the funnel. Uh, we stay with top of the funnel, mine the franchise, run campaigns, uh, keep going along. I mean, I think uh, it's a boring business. Uh, and uh, but needs high level of efficiency and high level of uh, risk management uh, capabilities, high level of data management capabilities, campaign orchestration capabilities, and we do this for a living. So we are at it. Uh, sure. Uh, also, one question on EMI card business. Uh, basically, we now have more than 32 million uh, EMI card already being given. What could be potential here? Uh, and also, any matrix uh, you would suggest that uh, if at all there are two loans on the same EMI card uh, for the same customer? Sorry, EMI card. Uh, EMI card, 32 million. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ravel. Sorry. Uh, what I'm asking is uh, the EMI card, one is the potential how much, uh, how many more customers you think can get, uh, be, take the EMI card. Uh, uh, because I think um, looking at your cross-level cross franchise where cu customers you want to do business. Uh, and second is uh, how many customers or EMI card holders have more than two loans or more than one loan running right now? 
आवर लोन और इन मार्केट लोन आवर लोन आवर लोन नो नो ओनली बजाज आवर लोन आवर लोन वुड बी टेन ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ फ्रेंचाइज I mean, which means at a point in time, one customer running two loans, he could be running a CD or a personal loan or a home loan, 10, 12 percent of the franchise. ADS person of franchise would possibly be running one product at a point in time. Okay, credit card, if you add it, maybe number will be 15, 18 percent. On 34 million, it will be 20, 22 percent. Perfect. On 34.66 million, number will be 22 to 25 percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, number would be 25 percent would be running multiple products. Multiple products. 23 million are running one product okay. today. Today. 23 million. Yeah. 20, 22 million yeah. are we having. He is asking two products. He is asking two products uh, of the of the 34.66. So to the point Kurush is making, let me make the point so I am clear. We have 35 million best customers as we call it. 60 yeah. million total customers. Best customers 34.66. We are banking today 23 million customers. Uh, uh, if I take a unique customer view, it will probably be 18 and a half, 19 million customers would be unique. That, I mean, plus minus give and take, uh, eight, between 18, 18 and a half million would be uh, uh, unique bank. And uh, just to uh, reconfirm, uh, today we have 34.66 million cross sellable franchise uh, as we classify, and uh, we have close to 32.8 uh, EMI card holders as well. So largely the penetration level uh, is done in this piece, I mean the EMI card. So the now new franchise addition will only be the potential uh, EMI card holders. Is that right understanding? Yeah, the understanding is correct. Uh, Dhawal, uh, uh, most of the customers who purchase uh, electronics uh, do offer EMI card. Uh, we do have reasonably decent penetration of customers uh, taking loan from us, also buying EMI card. The number that we report is net of those which have been blocked or, clo or, or closed. Uh, this will represent, in a way, cost of franchise. Yeah. No, because I see a very strong growth versus our last uh, couple of years uh, in the people who already have uh, EMI card and also if I tally that number uh, with the cross sellable franchise which we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Param Subramanian from McQuarrie Group. Please go ahead. Hi Rajiv and team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on strong number. Um, uh, Rajiv, if I could ask this, uh, you uh, given this data on disbursements in the B2B segment, um, what would it be for a pre-pandemic base, 1 to FI 20 perhaps, what would this uh, run rate have been then? So we used to provide sometimes, uh, I don't know the number of the, of the block, uh, two things have happened, Param. The value share has grown much, much faster. That part of it is inflation, manufactured prices, input, uh, the value share, Sir, sorry value to interrupt growth you. and volume growth. Sorry. Madam, may I request you to mute your lines on your side, please? So I don't have the number of 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 the. Uh, I don't think we had. Uh, I I don't have it off the uh, offhand at this point in time, but we can. Uh, we'll be happy to share. Sandeep can provide that data. Sure, sure, that. Uh, uh, continuing on uh, another question from a participant, so uh, on the cross sale piece, now uh, if I look at the number of loans being booked, uh, roughly 7.5 million loans being booked on a 60 million franchise in this quarter. Now if I go back to say um, uh, a pre-pandemic day, say 1 QFI 20 or 3 years ago, uh, you were booking at a similar run rate, of course the wallet uh, you know, loans also add to that, but you were booking 7.5 million loans even then on a 35-36 million customer base. So, just trying to understand if repeat customer transactions have come down or is that something that you worried about uh, from a set of franchise level? For them, I think uh, when, when the point is correct, it, it, can be, it can be seen with respect to the cross-sell franchise as well. But the fact of the matter is that the, the sales in the market is not necessarily driven by customer franchise. The sales is driven by the number of customers walking into the store and buying product. The penetration level, as Rajiv explained earlier, has continued to remain range bound within 68 and 70 percent for us. So these are the customers who are going in the market and buying, and whenever they are buying, we are, we are getting a 70 percent market share of those customers. Got it, got it. And, and just one last question on, on the omni-channel um, data that you provided uh, on slide 13. 
So you're saying that you know roughly um, on the digital EMI card base, you're booking about two twenty seven thousand loans um, per quarter. Um, now uh, the the digital EMI card base itself has almost doubled. So if I'm looking at the the number of loans being booked, it's a bit flattish over there. Uh, you know, is, is this something that you think is going to pick up, and you know, it's, it's because it's uh, taking off this product now and uh, going to pick up, or uh, is this something you're concerned? So read it like, uh, look at it like a credit card, right? Credit card issue doesn't mean credit card active. Uh, in fact, our activation rates on EMI card on a 12-month 12, 12 basis are much higher than credit card activation rates. Whatever is published domain, no? I'm talking in public domain. So if uh, a, you have to look at it that way that uh, customers buy. In this case, um, uh, 522,000, we used to provide the data until last quarter, 60% of the customers pay 550 rupees and buy the product. So anybody who pays for it and buys the product, uh, their activation rates are distinctly higher. 12-month uh, vintage, we see anywhere between 45 to 50% activation rates. And we are also seeing that more customers coming onto our asset, more he is a fee-paying customer. Because his confidence is much higher that given whatever has happened in the payments industry over the last two years and customers have got, um, you know, if I may say so, uh, based on wishing, fishing, so on and so forth. Uh, so their confidence is much higher as they come on to the Bajaj FinServe app. So these activation rates are much, much higher than what a traditional payment product would you know, offer. And we continue to stimulate them. There is a level of seasonality uh, in it. But 60% paying for it itself should give very high degree of confidence because he is more creative to me. He's not taken an asset, and he is 60% of them out 520,000 have paid 550 rupees. Uh, and we make money on uh, 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 on every account on, on day zero. Uh, so, so we are very comfortable with the conversion rate. Got it. Thanks, Rajiv, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shabrancho Mishra from UBS Group. Please go ahead. Hi, Rajiv. Uh, you think, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the first question is from the annual report. Uh, this would be the first year where we have seen a lot of board members going out, almost like you know, three or four, which is for the first time in the last 13, 14 years. So is, there a, is this like a precursor into any further management changes? And if there are, do we see you getting into a non-executive role? Uh, that's the first part, uh, first question. Second is that... Uh, uh, thanks that we've uh, diversified into non-captive uh, two-wheelers, but then for a long period we have been uh, talking about data analytics and pre-approved offers. So why can't we, uh, you know, have pre-approved offers for utility vehicles? For utility vehicles? So yeah. we lost you. Hello. We are unable to hear you. So can I request to speak to the handset, please? Hello. Can you hear me now? I'm asking a question on utility is uh, commercial vehicles, right? Uh, so what I was asking is that uh, why haven't we diversified into other uh, vehicle formats? For example, we can do a cross-sell and a pre-approved offer for our uh, rural uh, customers who can do uh, who can buy utility vehicles and car loans for our urban customers. Again, we can use data analytics and cross-sell. That's uh, that's the second question I have. So, I mean, there's not, uh, at a board, board composition and management composition have, are not connected. Uh, board composition is changing. I would say a generational shift is, is happening is how you should, uh, uh, you should uh, look at it. Um, so that's the response to the first question. Uh, on uh, CV, um, uh, we so far have a retail consumer view rather than a productive asset view. We do it only in our captive business where we do three-wheeler financing. That's for captive reasons and for legacy reasons. Otherwise, so far, we don't have a commercial vehicle view. Uh, do we have a new auto loans view? Uh, answer is yes. We've just kicked off the non-captive two-wheeler business. Sometime in FI24, we will launch even the new auto loans business. Um, that is the last product, quote unquote, or the final product that we launch on the retail side. Our customer, uh, used car we already do, uh, to the point Anoop is making, uh, last four years we are doing used car as used car sales to, to a, uh, hopefully half a billion dollars balance sheet by end of the year. We, we should, uh, uh, we should, uh, that, that makes money. Uh, uh, new autos take much longer to make money. Uh, 
so uh, and then we'll venture into what takes longer to make money so that's really how we are uh, so new autos is part of the plan sometime in 24 uh, cv is not part of the plan one question still remains unanswered. What happens when you move, uh, if you move into a non-executive role to the entire company? I just got, I think my shareholders got reappointed for five years as managing director. So I'm here, <laughs> at least uh, based on the approval of, uh, of the uh, shareholders. Uh, I'm very much here. Sure. Thank you so much, Rajiv. Thank you. And we have a deep management bench. And we have a comprehensive succession planning process. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manjiri from SBI Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, congratulations on your results. Uh, Sorry. We are not able to hear you, Manjiri. Hello. Uh, yeah, good evening. Yeah, clear. It's clear. Yeah, congratulations to Bajaj Finance on the result. I have just two, three questions. Uh, one regarding the composition of your uh, AUM. Could you take us through the your perception of the risk profile and mitigation on the auto finance, which Q and Q there is a degrowth. Is there a conscious degrowth or a slowdown? And uh, loan against securities, there is a jump of 72% June on June. So any, yeah. I mean, if you can give some flavor on that. And uh, regarding deposits, what is the percentage of uh, public deposits in it? Yeah. Mm, uh, uh, deposits, public deposits is 70 percent and uh, corporate deposits is 30 percent, plus minus one or two percent. That's one. Uh, uh, loans against securities, um, is it, there, there's normally some degree of lumpiness. It's related to markets. It's volatile at times. So I've seen this portfolio go to, in 2018 to 8,000 crore, went down to 3,000 crore in March 20, went to... So... Uh, um, uh, we are amongst the largest last lenders in India. Um, uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a good business, profitable business, um, uh, and we are uh, dovetailed into uh, the h and broking business that we're building, and so on and so forth. So um, it's just volatile based on market volatility rather than anything else. Uh, we would like it to not be volatile. We would like it to be one way, but it doesn't work that way. Um, uh, management assessment or assurance on, on, on risk portfolio quality, as you can see in the uh, portfolio quality panel, which is panel 40, next, next. 47, yeah, uh, panel 53 and 54 and 55, uh, and we provided 9, 10 quarter data, that should, uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler, uh, we would, as I said, 10 are green, this is only one which is yellow, and uh, it would get green at 90%. Because while based on February 20, it should be green, but that's not how uh, it was. It was not in the best of health, even in February 20. Um, so, uh, Thank you, 90 uh, to get green. Okay. Another uh, question regarding the rural segment. Uh, uh, is the growth more like growth due to the uh, ticket size of the borrowers? Are they borrowing more per uh, individual? Or it is a growth more on the number of centers added. Um, and one last question on the LCR. Uh, sorry, sir. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just last question on the LCR. That uh, it has grown from uh, one thirty-four percent in March quarter to one ninety-six percent in June. So any reasons for that? Any? Uh, it's a conscious uh, uptick. Take one. Yeah, if you can elaborate on that, please. Thanks. Manjari on LCR, uh, we have consciously been keeping much higher liquidity in the balance sheet. And that is the reason why you have seen this number increase in the current quarter. So it's by design than anything else. Uh, we have been able to raise a decent amount of long-term monies uh, from, from, from money market as well as from banks in the current quarter. And uh, the surpluses that we have raised during the quarter has also, gone, uh, has, has also got deployed for LCR purposes. Thank you. And uh, regarding the rural segment, uh, you are seeing growth for the number of centers. That is propelling the growth or the ticket size is increasing? Um, uh, it's, so we don't look at it ticket size that way. Ticket size adjusted by inflation largely remains flat. So it's, it's mainly uh, locations and deepening the locations that we are in. You know. uh, in general, uh, location 
kicks in from a maturity standpoint at 21 to 24 months. You okay. know, so that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. And now, in the conference, over to Mr. Samir Bise for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining this call today, and thank you to the leadership team of Bajaj Finance Limited uh, for giving us this opportunity uh, that ends the call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you very much.